can you come on? You know, I've taken a little bit of time today, but I think given if I even if I add up all the times I've waited for you, please, it will never equal this ever. Scratch never the surface. enough. Never enough. Never enough for me. For me. For me. For me. You're not Lauren Allred. Stop trying to be Lauren Allred. You're Monet All, all Brown. <laughs> <laughs> According to you, I'm All Red. Um, you today was your last day of, of your um. Oh, wait, we're the, recording. Yeah. Oh my God! No one told me we were fucking recording. That's okay. Oh, she she how, but, oh I'm shy. Oh. <laughs> Let me tell y'all how Bob oh. be putting on. Bob, before the before we were recording, Bob was in y'all the only mood at it. Dude, and now that he saw that little motherfucking red button at the top, so about some, um, um, you'll never be all red. No, 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 no. Now you want to put on you, nigga. You be putting the fuck on for these fucking bitches. Okay, first of all, I'm the over way that you know Monet is full of shit. You didn't even realize they were recording. So apparently, this alleged shift in but my, but you knew, you this knew a, this alleged shift in my personality. But you, this, you this, knew this alleged shift in my personality. What was the shift? Jacob can Jacob can corroborate that you were in a mood. Uh, Despite your reason. best efforts to put me in the mood, I'm not in the mood today. I am a little sleepy, which I've stated several times. I just woke up. Yeah, you sleepy, just like your drags. All Drowsy. right. So today sleepy. we're reviewing Drag Race season 15, episode seven. Jacob, first of all, to, to quote Malaysia to uh, to Marsha, 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 <laughs> don't ever cut me off. I don't cut you off. Don't. I never disrespected you. Don't disrespect me. You sit here every week talking about your makeup, your makeup. I let you talk. I let you say your piece. Down. Okay, can I just say, after we are seven weeks into RuPaul's Drag Race season 15, I am officially obsessed with Mistress Isabel Brooks. I you, you've been obsessed since, since episode one. Like what's like we're, But like not- now, but you like, you know, but like you have that obsession, but now I'm like like and now you see their body of work. You're like you see I, she's she's a great fucking dancer. She always she's she's fashion, she looks good, she's funny. She's good in challenges. I I want this fat bitch to win so bad. I want this bitch to win. I love Mistress Isabel Brooks. Yeah, it might be Men in Black is um she's great. <laughs> Whenever I see her name, I always think Men in Black. I don't know why every time I think Men in Black. Um, Bob, she- I miss you. Before we start, I want to celebrate you for a second, my little Daisy, my little Dipsy Doodle. I was so proud of you. I've seen so many little tags from your Troubadour show. You were number one on the iTunes charts overall for uh, rap. You were number yeah, five, five on yeah. iTunes overall. So I peaked, I'm so proud I of peaked. you. That's, so it is crazy. I, no, I you peaked. peaked in high school, honey. <laughs> <laughs> I peaked at number five on the uh, for, uh, for albums out of all albums, which is really wild. And then I peaked at... I peaked at one, which is as high as you can peak, honey. And then granted, it was for like three hours, but that's not that's not the point. Actually, I went back and forth like two times. So there's this rapper named Big X the Plug who um who no Big X album is really good. I'm not gonna lie. I I, I just don't know. I've never even heard that name before. I don't know who that is. I went and listened to Mr. The Plug's music. Um, and I will say Big X has like two million spotify listeners so the fact that i even am up there with him at all is really really impressive um but listen if you guys if you guys are listening and you have not had a chance to listen to my album yet my ep please 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 go give my album a little listen and leave me a review on itunes um i would love 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 if you could leave me a review on itunes um because i'm really proud of this ep and we're we're, we're turning up thank you so much how was your last day of your throwing op- up your lower back like damn how was your last day at the opera so Bob, you're getting down a little bit. Drag me. Yeah, because you're peeking, honey. You're peeking all around. Is this better? I mean, you were fine for it's me before, so I don't now, know. But I think it, it's not peeking. So How's that? that? That's great. Say something loud. Something loud, honey. Yeah, that's fine. I think we'll, we'll <laughs> grow from there. Jacob just, eh, I guess it's so that, fine. That's, Whatever. That's Jacob. I was talking to Jacob. <laughs> Jacob and uh, Kennedy. Someone asked one of them something. I was like, do you guys want to do this? And they both, they both do this. Sure. <laughs> it drives me. I'm like, yes or no? <laughs> sure. Well, Kennedy in general, Kennedy's general demeanor is she's very apathetic. She's just like, yeah, 
Sure. Sure. And I'm like, this is wild. Um, <laughs> wait, this is your last night. This is your last night of the opera. At the it's Opera. my last night in Minneapolis. Today was our last show. We did um, we did a, a matinee today, and um, the the um the president the director of the opera company like the highest position you can have at the minnesota opera here ryan taylor came up to me before the show he was like i don't want to get like super emotional or 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 make you think that i'm just saying this because you're monet whatever he was like in my decades doing this i have never seen people react to someone the way they did to you at an opera and um he's like it just speaks to like you know like just the people who a came to just see you because you're in this but also people who love opera and were really taken aback by your talents on the show and he was just really pleased with it we're talking about doing some stuff in the future i gave them i have like all these ideas of these operas i want to do like number one is doing a, a magic flute i think i told you this before i want to be drag zarastro i want to be i want it to be queen versus queen i have the other ideas for for um from um Don Giovanni and some other opera, so we're gonna we're, we're going on some working on some good stuff. The ballet hitting them up in Sydney and Australia, they were like, "We need Monet's contact information because we need her to we want her to come and do this thing in Sydney." So, so well, we have an opportunity well, to come at, in. The, at the ballet. That's so cool. <laughs> yeah, that, I know. Well, there were there were ballet dancers, there were ballerinas in the opera. Do so ballet and opera go hand in hand a lot? Yeah, I would say they go hand in hand a lot. There aren't many singing roles in ballet, but um. Singing roles in oh, ballet, but they are acting I roles. He says, I thought that was like a Italian. Oh, Singaro. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was like, yeah, bitch, Singaro. I live for a Singaro, honey. <laughs> I was like, I'm in it. Singaro. Singaro. Bob Singaro, this Singaro. Idea. Y'all know Bob is the, is the idea queen. Bob was like, Monet, you need to do um, a gay version of an opera <laughs> and call it a name. I was like, Bob, I love that idea. We cannot call it that name because only certain people can say the name of the show, which is a big part and in, in, in a part of telling the news about the Damn. show. <laughs> Just as Wait. a reminder, there's we've done an episode before where you both said the name loudly and then sang it like the part in the show. Yeah, so say oh, it. Oh, we did? Mom. Yeah, say it. Oh, Bob thinks that I should do the gay marriage of Nigoro. And I'm like, N- we can't call it the gay marriage Nigoro. of Nigoro. Honestly, that would slap. The gay marriage of Nigoro? Honestly, anyway. comment below if you want to see Monet do the gay marriage of Nigoro. <laughs> Nigoro. <laughs> that is so um, brilliant. It's some of the, my best anyway, work. Anyway, it's not about us, Bob. Today, this is about the new queens of RuPaul's Drag Race season 15, that which there are 12 left, 11 left. 12 left. Do you, do you think RuPaul's going to retire soon? Uh, 11. They're 11. 11. Do you think RuPaul's going to retire soon? She has to at some point. She's, she'll be 65 next, next She'll be 65 this no, year. No. RuPaul is 63. Do you think Madonna's going to retire sometime soon? Yeah. Well, I think that what Madonna and, and RuPaul are doing is two different things. And I think that a lot of people, a lot of people do music into their 60s and 70s. And I don't... And a lot I of people know. host TV shows. Pat Sajak hosted Wheel of Fortune until he died. But it's drag. It's just specifically drag race. It's not, it's not just... You had like I, you think Pat Sajak and RuPaul are doing the same thing? That's the reason why RuPaul has way more Emmys than Pat Sajak's dusty. Yeah, I'm just kidding. Think, <laughs> but Pat think, Sajak is passed is, away. I think. Is he dead? I don't think he's dead. You think I'm Alex pretty Trebek. sure. I'm pretty sure Pat Sajak may be dead. Will of Fortune, he's alive, Monet. Oh, Jacob, you anyway, that? Jacob will let us argue before he googles. We, we would just be over. <laughs> Also, but I mean, but they're still hosting TV shows. RuPaul is not getting up there doing challenges, and, and bitch, RuPaul is sitting behind a desk and saying yes, no, maybe so. Wow, so RuPaul, wow. you said you said RuPaul ain't doing shit. Oh my god, god. That's what I'm saying. Monet said RuPaul is barely <laughs> lifting a fucking finger. Oh my god, Monet, why are you, why you RuPaul like always battling? Ever since she unfollowed you on Facebook, you've been real <laughs> on Facebook. Sour. Damn, Bob is really in his Gen X bag. Not Facebook. Not Facebook. <laughs> what about Facebook? Did I say Facebook? I mean, <laughs> did I say Facebook? With your Gen X and ass. With your Gen X and ass. Wait, what's the name of this episode? Oh, I didn't. I didn't title the document. Sorry, I was. I was. Trying, I've, been, I've been trying to open my my document this whole time. It's a so, Daytona wins two. Got it. Money. My yeah. prediction came true. Which was what? That they're gonna redo Daytona wins, but there's no farts. That's what I said. I well, I thought that they were gonna tell the girls that there were farts and they were gonna take them out. But I think did RuPaul told them what it was gonna be from the from jump. Oh, really? what? Oh, did she? Yeah, yeah. Got it, got it, got it. So, okay. So, uh, by the way, I did, we did, I, I hadn't discussed last time, but um, I I I've since watched Untucked for last week's episode, and uh-huh. Malaysia, 
really let Marsha have it. And honestly, Team Malaysia. Team, really? Team Malaysia. I mean, we're going to talk about it too because they talk because they go on about this in the fallout again. But and we kind of differed last week in our opinions. And I still think that I get that Malaysia is hurt, but I think she's doing the most. And because later on when her, and, well, well, I don't want to, where, where, where are we going to start? If you guys want to understand my position better, go back and watch the episode called The One About Bob's Tooth and you'll see why I agree. <laughs> With Malaysia, because some niggas don't know when the when the joke and when the hee hee ha ha comes to an end, and the, and you know what? I I believe that Monet would be team fucking <laughs> everyone else, honey. Um, but anyway, well, in, so, in the fall of the episode, they're talking about it, and I agree with like Rux is like, okay, I get you or her, but bullying, we, like especially with the fandom of RuPaul's Drag Race and the optics of that, we have to be really careful with, with what words we're using. Yeah, they were playing around so much. No one was bullying Malaysia. It was how she, she was felt. not bullying. It's how she felt. Yeah, but you you can feel that way, but that does not make it true. Well, if, if bullying is subjective, and that's how Malaysia felt, then it is what it is. Bullying is not a definitive word. It's, 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 it's all based on how you perceive it. And she felt like she was being bullied in the moment. Now, imagine you were her and everyone's being like, bitch, you're overreacting. You don't know what you're talking about. None of us were there. She, she knows how she felt in that moment. But you have to be careful with the words that you use on TV. When you come on the show, you have to really be careful. All of us, when we go on the show, it is up to us. Because, again, fans watch the show and 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 they're digesting what we're saying. So you have to be really careful about about the words that you're using. And all of us watching it, no one felt that she was being bullied. Now, again, it's not, I, it's, it's not our business. I did not say because, she was or was not bullying. I, I wasn't do you feel, there. Do you, feel, do you feel that Malaysia was being bullied? I, th- I really think it's from the perception of the person who is being I bullied. know. I know what I'm saying. But you, just if you watching as a student, do you, do you, did, did it look like a bullying scenario to you? I believe that Malaysia felt bullied, and I believe that's valid. Whether or not I was bullying, it, it kind of teeters back and forth for me. If, they, if Malaysia wasn't joking, if Malaysia wasn't in on it, and they kept making fun, and she wasn't having they fun. They were making fun. They were making fun, though. All I'm saying is, if Malaysia felt bullying, I'm not going to be here to say, she was, that wasn't bullying, bitch. You don't know what the fuck you're talking about. You weren't getting bullied. You sensitive bitch. You're just being sensitive. <laughs> I did not say all that. See, you can't add. You cannot add all these you things. You called her Bob. a bitch. You called her a <laughs> dumb bitch. You called her a you sensitive crybaby bitch. You said her trauma from her childhood doesn't matter. Also, so at one point, um, um, uh, this is we, we got a, one of these. I hate these apologies. Uh, Men in Black goes. <laughs> Men in Black goes. I know exactly what you want to say. I apologize <laughs> if I made you feel that way. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> okay, and so, and so I think everyone can identify with having to apologize to someone when you don't think you were in the wrong. And my thing is, okay, here's my thing. I you know that's not apologize. a apologize. I would, I know, but I think she did it because she wanted to make Malaysia feel better. And I think a lot of us can identify with wanting to apologize to someone, but not feeling that like you did anything wrong. So I feel, and and again, it may take some time, right? This just happened. This was what probably in real time, like a four hour time difference. Like you, no one has has had time to to sit and think and process it. Because like I apologize if you felt bad. It was not my intention to make you feel bad. I apologize if if, if that's what happened to you. And I think that's valid. I think that uh, uh, saying I apologize if I made you if if you felt some kind of way is basically like I'm sorry that you're sensitive. <laughs> I'm sorry. No. That you're, th- that's what, th- in in my opinion, and and it's and it's not an unpopular opinion. Apologizing if someone felt some sort of way is not an apology. That that is that is not an apology. Which is funny because down the line, Malaysia gives um, Mistress the exact same apology down the line. Sorry if you felt some kind of way, but but none of them are none of them are ever apologizing for their behavior or for their actions. They're just apologizing that you felt. I'm so sorry that you felt some kind of way. I'm so sorry that <laughs> you felt a kind of way. Well, as someone who has been on the receiving end of one of those Bob apologies, first of I, all, I, 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 I've. I have apologized for my behavior. I you 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 can scour the yeah yeah. Internet. You've never apologized to me. Yeah, that's, not yeah, true. that's correct. You can scour the you can scour every hour of sibling rivalry, and you will not find me going. I apologize if you felt some kind of way. It's never happened on sibling rivalry. <laughs> oh, what how, how what how convenient? Oh wow, Bob. So 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 our whole interaction, our whole friendship, was just on fucking sibling rivalry. Well, I that's don't, what you think, nigga. I don't. I don't apologize if someone. Felt oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause stop right there. I don't apologize. Just stop right there. Uh, Monet, we also have full hours of you not apologizing, to me, but we're gonna go into that. You literally <laughs> refusing, even though I'm literally begging and with tears. Anyway, but I, I don't. I, as a rule, I don't apologize if someone felt some kind of way. That's that's just to me. That's that's just not an apology. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. But also something else that that, uh, that men in black say that kind of drove me crazy. She goes, she goes, um, 
but the, I wrote it down or I typed it down. She goes, but what you don't have to do is speak about me when I'm not in the room. Bitch, I will speak about anybody I want in any way I want at any time I want. I don't necessarily agree with the notion that it's like, you can't speak about me behind my back. Bitch, but I can. Well, but but the context, but there's context. She was saying that because Malaysia was saying all this stuff and she wanted Mish I'm not I'm not calling it MIB. She wanted mistress to like own up to festival this thing where she, when when she was not there for the whole discussion. So how am I how am I gonna hear your side of the story when I wasn't even there to hear what she's well, talking I think about? That Malaysia was just, in my opinion, I don't know, but I think Malaysia was just a little bit too upset to rehash it. So Malaysia didn't feel like didn't feel like getting into it. And then when Lux brought it up, Malaysia said she said all of my thoughts. Malaysia didn't back down. She didn't say I didn't say that. She didn't cower in the corner. Malaysia said she said all of my thoughts. All the things she said was how I felt. But in the all moment the she, she said, all the things she said. But in the moment, she just didn't hand. feel like it, it seems she, she's like she's one of these. She was one of the. Well, well, she was in a bad mood. And she, I think she was acknowledging that she was in a bad mood. And I can only imagine how upsetting it is when you're in a bad mood and everyone keeps acting like you being in a bad mood is, is out of control. When you're in a bad mood and everyone's like, we're all just kidding. What's wrong with you? That shit would drive me fucking crazy. No one's bullying you. You're acting crazy. And then, so she just said, she said, she said all my thoughts. So in my opinion, Malaysia owned up to her feelings without having to hash it out. And I don't necessarily agree when folks say, but what you what you're not gonna do is talk about behind my back. It's but like Mishra said that after Misha said that before Malaysia said Lux it on my thoughts. I can't remember. I can't remember if she said it before or not. But that's, I, that's a sequence. It happened because sure. Um, I, I don't remember. Lux said the right. thing. Then Mishra pops off and she's like, "Well, you talk about me. You talk about me when I'm in the room." Which was which prompted Malaysia to say, "Well, Lux just said on my thoughts." And I, I just thought about the thing. Then then that's when Mishra was like, "Well, bitch." Da, 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 da. But also we're talking about like again the shreds of drag race. At this point, you're this is what two. Two weeks in, about you are like this is when you start to go crazy. I I think three weeks is like the really good going crazy part, but this is when you start to unravel. You As a person in, who's done it you three times, in not talking about people when they're not in the room. No, I've I've talked about people when they're not in the room, but I will that, say that, if that's, I if that's I say the point I'm getting at the the line where she goes, what you're not gonna do is what what you don't have to do is talk about me when I'm not in the room. I don't believe that we have a right to dictate when other people talk about anything, really. I will say it is annoying and frustrating when someone will say something about you when you're not in the room, and when you're in the room, they're like, "Huh?" I didn't no, say she that. didn't go, "Huh?" She owned I know, up. I know, I know, I know. I'm saying, I'm saying that is a, that is a frustrating and and an and, and annoying thing to me when so, you and this mic when someone <laughs> the squeeze. It was wild, but I just won't touch it. <laughs> um, when someone will say something about you when you're not in the room, and then when you're in the room, they're like, "Huh?" What do you mean? I didn't say that. Oh, well, well, what I meant to say was, no, bitch, what did you say when I wasn't there? Well, that is kind of annoying, but that's not what happened. That's not what happened here. Yeah. Anyway, we can't harm it on it. We What's have a whole episode on Malaysia, on Malaysia, baby doll fox name. <laughs> you, 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 these, these men in black uh, apologists. Oh, my God, please. Anyway, moving on, Bob. Also, I love the next day they walk in. Malaysia got these girls on eggshells. Malaysia got these girls nervous. Not mistress. Listen, not mistress, honey. Mistress literally didn't even want to look at Malaysia. Malaysia's. And Mistress was like, I'm not, and Mistress was like, I am not looking at this girl at all. Some other inside tea is that Malaysia left set for a while and they had to go bring her back when she was gone for like 45 minutes. Oh, this Malaysia why, left set for a little bit. See, this is why I'm so, it kind of drives me a little bit crazy because like a lot of people are going on about how this, how this fucking queen overreacted and we, we do not know. You cannot, you cannot determine whether or not someone else is overreacting. Like it is so invalidating to tell someone that their action is an overreaction um, when we have so little of the context for why they're reacting the way that they are. But she's also overreacting on a girl. She's yelling on people. She's popping off on people. She's so she's taking her her anger and then it's bubbling over and pissing other people off. So these so but then so we're invalidating other people reacting to her. They're no, reacting no, to the energy she's giving them. That's, that's not the same thing. I I'm not invalidating anyone. I'm when I'm saying when you're saying someone's overreact. I'm not saying I'm not saying that anyone's overreacting. I don't think anyone is overreacting. It's, I'm not invalidating anyone's feelings. It is invalidating though when you say oh ketchup and mustard. It is invalidating though. Uh, you and me. Mm -hmm. It is invalidating, though, when oh. you say that someone's reaction is an overreaction. I don't think that that Men in Black is overreacting. I don't think Lux is overreacting. I don't think Marsh is overreacting. 
So I don't see how I'm invalidating anything, but but also when you're angry and someone tells you to shut up or stop talking, or I'm sick of talking about this, that shit would piss me off. No one said that to her. Yes, she did. Marsha said it to her in the last week. Marsha said, I'm sick of I'm sick of hearing about this. Marsha said, I'm is that, sick what, is that, is that what Marsha said? Really? Marsha said, I'm so sick of this subject. While she was in the middle of her thing, Marsha oh, I, goes, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't watch Untucked. I just saw a little Marcia clip goes, to remember. I'm so sick of this subject. And Malaysia was like, baby, I'll let you complain for three weeks about your fucking makeup. Don't cut me off. Do not well, yeah, fucking that, cut me off. That's fierce. And I think that that is super duper valid. And when she was in that room, she didn't, she never backed, she never lied, she never denied. She just was in her feelings. And it is okay to have feelings. We do not know why this queen is reacting yeah. the way she is. So that's why I'm saying. I that. don't think that she's overreacting. And I think it's weird that everyone keeps telling her she is. And obviously, if she left the room for 40 minutes or so, however long, even if she left the room for 10 minutes, clearly this affected her very greatly. Words out with that. I'm saying, had I been in a situation, I'd be like, bitch, it's not that deep. And that would have been my thing. But that's so invalidating. Telling well, someone that would have been my deep, experience. That, 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 is, that is my experience. No, if I was in that situation, if I was mistress, and I mean, again, I can only see what I'm, what we're seeing on the cameras, right? If I was a Lux and mistress, when everyone was like, because it wasn't even Lux, only Lux and mistress playing around. Everyone was laughing at Kikin. Even Malaysia, I watched the clip again. Even Malaysia was and, and Sasha were like laughing around. Sasha was like making funny eyes. So I could see how Malaysia and Lux were like, oh, we're just, we're, we're just, we're just Kikin. Even later, when mistress and and when mistress and Malaysia talk about it, they even talk about like this is the dynamic they have off camera. This is how they play around all the time. So that's why mistress didn't think that it was anything crazy. She, she thought that Malaysia was just playing around with them because that's the dynamic they have off camera, on camera, all the time the way i probably would have handled it i probably would have said you know what i apologize i didn't realize that would be upsetting and i thought we were just kidding and i can see now that you're not in a good mood and i apologize i i if i if i would have realized that you were um that you were upset when you were i wouldn't have made those jokes so i apologize i'm sorry that's how i that's what i would have done instead of being like it is not that deep imagine when you're mad and, and someone and two or three people going it is not that deep it's not that serious baby <laughs> I mean, imagine I, I, how you would feel if someone did that shit to you. I will say on Drag Race again at this time, you like Drag Race. Really, the stress of the show heightens feelings and heightens emotions. You like you do feel stuff differently where you're in this pressure cooker of, of the show and with all the stresses of the show. So I think that uh, that factor plays into it and why things got misconstrued. And why like, thought, let's move on. <laughs> Anyway, the next day, um, Rue introduces a challenge. They're doing the Daytona Wins Part 2. And um, because Aura won last week's challenge, she gets to um, dish out the roles. And I think <laughs> Aura is dishing out the roles. And I think she sees everyone choosing fancy. So she goes for fancy. I don't think her natural inclination was to go with fancy but i think in her mind she's like oh everyone's choosing that i should choose that role because that's what everyone wants i I haven't given that much thought i mean maybe what was weird to me was that i, I kind of like so Ori gets to sign the roles because she won last week's challenge and um she says that um, anyone who's been nicer is going to get the roles they want i don't know if she's just kidding or not because she seems to just kind of she doesn't she doesn't really seem to do anything shady with the passing out of the role maybe she was just maybe she was just like doing a bit because she didn't seem to favor anyone in particular. Did you think so? No, I don't think so. She also said that she's never done anything over the top, but last week she was really over the top. That was kind of the whole thing that she was really over the top. Oh, yeah. The, she, the she old lady metal thing. Over the top. And like last week, I was like, girl, last week you were really, the whole thing was, and also her runway was over the top. She does a lot of over the top stuff. So like the, the um the one with her, with her back exposed. She does a lot of over the top stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. But I mean, in this challenge, we're going to see, uh, she struggled a little bit. Well, not a little bit, a lot of it in the challenge. And maybe it's because she wasn't allowing Dragger. herself to go a little over the top. So everyone's saying that. So during rehearsal, everyone's gagging because Malaysia, Malaysia, who's got these bitches on their fucking tippy toes. And Mistress Malaysia. and Malaysia, they're in the same group. They end up being know, in the same everyone's group. gagging because Malaysia got these bitches on their tippy toes and Mistress and her are in the same group. Why do you, why you hate Malaysia so much? What's your issue? Stop. What's your issue, baby? This is your you're on your Tamisha Iman shit. You're on your Tamisha Iman shit. Starting from it is not there. You're on your Tamisha Iman. I am not playing this game with you. You're on your Tamisha Iman. What's your issue with the fox? You're you're on your Tamisha Iman stuff. I'm not playing this game with you. Anyway, they said what the fox say. You know what the fox said. The parent of the fox says, "Don't ever interrupt me." That's what. What does the fox say? Don't ever disrespect me because I've never disrespected you. What does the fox say? The fox says, "The fox says I said what I said." And when they're rehearsing, it's clear that Aura Mayari does not know a lot of Drag Race references. I was like, like, I'm like, watch the show. 
I'm like, bitch, do you know what show you auditioned to be? How do you not know these references to the show? These are, these, and these, these aren't like F side references, like, you know, like something Bob the Drag Queen said on season eight. These are like things like Soak It Up, or when, when they exchange it, Vivation. These are like prime time drag race references. Rigor Morris, she didn't know what any hole as a goal is. And I was like, does this girl watch the show at all? Do you? <laughs> it's so crazy. This is like when, when, when Vivi DeHarbonne didn't know who um, Ornacia was. Oh, she didn't. I don't remember that. Yeah, Bibi the Harbinet on on um on um All Stars on on her three. All Stars three. She didn't know who she didn't know who Ornacia was. Well, I fully I don't think Bibi has watched a single episode of Drag Race that she's not on. You're probably right. Like I knowing Bibi. Yeah. Um. <laughs> but, but yeah, they're really gagging. So what ends up happening is um. Do you think that did Mistress play her? Did Mistress oh. like? Mistress finesse the shit out of Aura Maguire. She that. is that's like, what I would have done. Oh, and girl, I was watching. I was like, this is some Bob the Drag Queen tactic, girl. This is so Bob. You probably like Monet. If I were you, I would give that role to me because I honestly think you would you would just shine better as doing this, Monet. Trust me when I tell you, Monet. You this is this is you, Monet. This is you. But also, Mistress was right though. Like she, I mean, was she finessing? Probably, but I think that. Aura would have got even more lost in the sauce. I agree. If, if she had, if she had the role of fancy, she would have got completely lost in the sauce. In my opinion, <laughs> Mistress, Mistress is smart. She is crafty. She is sneaky. She is beautiful. She is everything that we need in a drag re- in, in a drag race winner. I love her. Um. Yeah. And Mistress is Mistress is a really great is a really great queen. And she also I, I saw a clip of her online dancing. She dances Bitch, like me too in the white thing. She does like Kenny Davenport. Bob, I this is that's what that's what pushed me over the hill. I was like, this bitch, <laughs> she better fucking uh, move. Uh, <laughs> my entire table. <laughs> Belinda China Shop, girl. Welcome to the stage, Belinda. Belinda China Shop. Oh my God! There's there's hot chicken and sauce on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> no, hot chicken and sauce. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucking dead. I have to get it before it stains the, the carpet. On the carpet. My, y'all, this is can I can't. You, can you just repeat what Bob said, just in case? So this nigga was, this nigga was trying to show us the mistress dance moves, and the first little fuete, he kicks over a table which has hot sauce and chicken all over it. Apparently, he, he kicked it onto a rug, so he needs to clean the rug before it stains. Oh my god. <laughs> anyway. Hey, look, we can't all be mistresses. We can't all be men in black. <laughs> <laughs> we can't all be men in black. So, um, okay, so yeah. when his price goes up, are you talking the about the actual challenge right? now? It's the actual challenge. Do what? Are you talking about the rehearsing or like rehearsing? Re- rehearsing. It, yeah, it's it's the same. It's the same, right? It's the same. It's, it's so it's, tired. It's, it's Molly. It's, it's Molly tired. Cyrus. It's, it's, it's tired. It's, 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 I mean, what I honestly think, this is my, you can tell me what you think about this. I think that Spice is, is, I like Spice. I think Spice is funny. And actually, I, I think she's cute. I just think that Spice has not had a whole lot of time to cook and marinate in the real world of trying to do this stuff. Whereas you have people like, yeah, Marsha has only been doing drag for, two years, whatever it is, but she's also a theater kid, right? Marsha has had to act. Marsha has had to do all these things, but she had to build different characters and do different stuff. So that's why, even though they've been doing drag for the same amount of time, it is just different. Like, Spice has not had enough time to do this stuff to to try to perfect these skills. Also, somebody gathered us. They said, Marsha has never been on Broadway. Someone was like, let me tell y'all, Monet and Bob, I love y'all. Marsha's not, as, as a Broadway, Marsha has never been on Broadway, honey. Oh my I God. Like, I was like, damn, y'all are passionate. These, not, not the Broadway gatekeeping. Not the Broadway gatekeeping. <laughs> well, because Marsha is a theater kid. Let me say that. She's had time to do all this stuff. And Spice just haven't had the time. And it is the same character every time. Bitch, when Rue and when Rue and Michelle read her on the main stage for that fucking your favorite little move. Oh, I hate that move. My A N T I Your A N T I And I was like, well, I'm like, what is Miles Harris doing back? Like, how did Miles Harris get back in here? Um, and as soon as Jax came onto the scene, a mess. 
a mess, a mess, a mess, a mess. Jax is just not. Jax well, is Jax not is so with under, it. Jax is a very uh, understated queen. But also, I don't think that the. In my opinion, on Drag Race, I would not personally go for the stoner character. And if you do, it has to be over the top. It has to be Cheech and Chong. It can't be Clerks. It has to be. It has to be like half baked, not Clerks. You yeah. know what I mean? It has to be. It has, it has to be. I mean, even you think of a stoner like Laganja. Laganja is a stoner, but she's not like, yeah, man. Yeah, Laganja is the most when, turned up of all of us. But even when she was doing the stone character, I'm like, that wasn't even giving me stone character. It just looked like she was just like, yeah, how are you? It wasn't giving me like, yeah, yeah, man. You know, it was like it was even her stone version of herself was still so subdued. Yeah, it was. It was. It, it, it was really. It, it really kind of felt like pulling blood from a stone at, at, at certain points. <laughs> Boy, that's a good. That is some southern. That is a southern thing. Is, is that a southern thing? I don't know. I mean, is it? Is but, it yeah, girl. It's like it's, it's like pulling blood from a stone. Yeah. <laughs> 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 um. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it is southern. I, sometimes, sometimes a lot of stuff I do apparently I found out was black or southern when someone told me it was black or southern. But oh. oh one of my friends told me I didn't realize it was a black thing until a white person told me, and I was like, oh, is that a black thing? I did not know this was a black thing. What? In bodegas, if you hold up something and say, how much is this? <laughs> is that a black but thing? Like, not near, but not near the cash register. You have to be where the thing is. <laughs> Apparently, it's a black thing to, like, go to be where the thing is and hold it up and look at the clerk and go, how much is this? How much is this? Well, I thought I thought that was just a New York thing. I didn't realize that was like a black thing. I do it. I do it. I do it. I used to do it all the time in New York City. And there's something else. Oh, yeah, uh, same. Well, I'm trying to think if any of my white friends would do that. And I, I don't think I have a, a recollection of. Imagine Nick at the bodega like, um, how much is this? Yeah, no. Jacob, would you would you stand over, over by the sodas and hold it up and ask how much it is? Um, that is not a behavior that I particularly identify with. No. <laughs> like I don't see, I don't see Mateo walking in and asking how, how much the muscle milk is, like at the fridge. You know what I mean? <laughs> All right, that bitch. I will be, I will be in the back. You know, because if they're not like a little narrow thing, that you bitch, I will be in the back corner. Oh. Like, <laughs> I have, but don't. I feel like most bodegas have those little red stickers that have the cost on them. Oh, no, that baby, is the nice the ones, bitch. Baby, they charge you what they... The, the prices differ at midnight versus noon <laughs> versus 5 o'clock. Every, every, am I lying one night? Depending on how much oh, the person likes girl. you, the prices will change. Uh-huh. Exactly. The same exactly. thing. You, the same thing. You got the same thing yesterday. How is it $6 more today? <laughs> I did not know it was a black thing. That is so, that's why, that's that, why that you can never me. walk with, with, with. You always walk with excess money because you don't know what you don't know what the inflation is going to be that day. You don't know what the price is going to be also, that day. Also, fun fact: if you go to New York City, it, by the way, this is illegal, but they're going to do it anyway. If you use your debit card, they're going to charge you more. That's not a two dollar thing. You're a not supposed fee. to be able to do that. You're not. You're not. They will just charge you for just for using a debit card. Yeah, that shit is crazy. New York is on some. New York be finessing niggas all the time. Oh, finessed <laughs> down every second of the day. But I, but I still, I still love this. I'm actually really happy to be back. Um, so, um, now let's go to the mirror moment. So, um, Malaysia then turns around and says to Mistress that she apologized to her if she felt some kind of way, which is so it's like such a weird <laughs> apology to me, to me personally. Well, you yeah, don't, we you don't think that's a weird apology. I do think I do. I don't think it's a weird apology. I think it's something that I've used before when I did when I genuinely am not feet and not I'm not feeling you're like not sorry. What are you apologizing for? Then you're not really sorry. But, but I always say to the person, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I I I'll say this. I genuinely don't think that I did anything wrong, and I'm going to be very honest with you. But I but I am sorry if it made you feel bad because it was not my intention to make you feel bad. I have said that because I because sometimes someone just wants to hear you say those words of I'm sorry that I made you feel bad. That I think people that makes people feel better that you are acknowledging that you are that you are sorry that w- so an action you did make them feel bad. I, I think that's that's a real thing, right? So I but I always say I, I would not just say I'm not sorry. Sorry that I made you. When people say sorry that you felt, there's a difference between saying sorry I made you feel bad and sorry that you felt a kind of way. Those are two very different apologies. This is true. I don't say the first one. I say sorry that what I did made you feel bad. It was not my intention to do that. I was simply blah 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 blah. Um, but anyway, but yeah, I, I, um, mistress, uh, so mistress and, um, Malaysia, Malaysia gathers mistress one more time. 
You are so problematic. Mistress, I wrote down. Malaysia grabbed Mistress by the fucking, the, all that hair. She gathered all that curly hair, that curly thick mane, and she fucking grabbed the men in black, honey. I wrote down, I think that Mistress brings up a very good point, that the language that Malaysia is using can be dangerous, especially with the fans watching, because, because even they both agree that off camera, like they were playing into their usual dynamic that they have off camera. Like, I don't know what off camera means. I mean, from my experience on Drag Race, that means at lunch, on the bus, back at the hotel, when you get to go to the pool with someone, the gym with someone, whatever it is, like that is a dynamic that they have off camera. And I think that that's what she's playing into. And that's why some lines were crossed and lines are blurred. I think that um, another uh, mirror moment. Oh, I, not the section of mirror moment, but um, I, I, um, Harvey Gann, we judged uh, Dracula together. Oh, he was also at our Just for Laugh show. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, that's that's what I, told, I, told you, I was like, me and him judged Dracula together. Um, being a judge on a rea- on a drag show is kind of strange. I'm not gonna Why? lie. Why? Um, it's just. <sighs> I don't typically offer drag queens my my thoughts on their drag to their faces. Like the only time I'm ever really talking about someone's drag is either on a review show or with a friend in private. But rarely do I just go up to a I'm queen about to and say, "We have a podcast about what you literally do it weekly for the past three no, years." I, I mean, I've done, I've done, I've done, I've done, I mean, I've done three seasons of the Pit Stop. I've done several seasons of this. I have my own show, but but like going up to someone's face and being like, "This is what I thought about your right after the performance when it's still raw." Is not something I typically make a habit of doing, so it is very interesting. You know, I've judged I've I've I've, I've judged um, some really great queens on um, Canada versus the World, and I was it's a it's I didn't feel weird about it. I was like, you know, I was like, I, I think that I have a very good opinion. I've been doing drag for a long time. I think I have a very strong point of view in drag, and I feel great offering my thoughts to these girls. And again, just like I do with judges on the show, I can take it or leave it. You know what I mean? Or like yeah. I can like apply or let it fly. No, I agree. I, I I don't I don't mind being judged. Like getting judged on the show is is is. I mean, I haven't done it in a long time, and so maybe I really don't quite re- really remember how it felt. Um, and I never I never got anything too horrible, to be perfectly honest. Um, but I do remember getting really harsh judging when I did America's Got no, Last Comic Standing, and and America's Got Talent, and it really crushed me. <laughs> like they were they were so mean. They were so mean. But um, jokes on them. Should we go into the looks? Jokes on them. Jokes on them. Thank you. <laughs> Should we go into the looks? Let's go into the lurks. Wow. I, say, I love Harvey Gian's top. This little pussy bow. Harvey Gian looks so cute. I love this I look. I do love a pussy bow. Um, Carson always looks great. Um, everyone looks good. They're all wearing blue besides Harvey, but the, the main judges are all wearing blue. RuPaul, is, she's been into her little nude illusion uh, midriff fantasy for a while now. Yeah, yeah. She's yeah, she been living her little, her, her little, her little midriff Yana dreams. So, a little hussy. Please. By the way, I can't believe they actually let them call the category Puffa, please. Why? I mean, you're not saying the word. I know, but it's just like, not Puffa, please. Well, you know, RuPaul loves the N-word. I've heard RuPaul say the N-word twice. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, yeah. RuPaul, I mean, RuPaul, yeah, A lot of black folks say the N-word, yeah. I think that if it left its own devices, RuPaul would say it every week. She probably does. Just like <laughs> you and me. <laughs> <laughs> so let, let's go into these looks. Um, so Lucy LaDuca is the Stay Puff Michelin Man. And I, I love this coat. This coat looks really cool. I do wish the leotard had a little bit more um, design Puff. elements to it. Not never say well, once you, elements to it. When she it's, first came out, I did not know who she was until I until I heard her talking head. I was I thought she was I what I thought she was. I was like she's Sailor Moon with a puffer coat on. I was like I don't get it. But I then she said she was. A, I recognized I it immediately. Really? Immediately, yeah. But also, I grew up watching. Um, I grew up watching Ghostbusters. And the Stay Puft Mission Man was a he was like a big part of that. I always thought he was just the guy from Ghostbusters. I didn't realize that he had a whole thing out, outside of that until later on. So I re- I recognized it right away. Um, I think she looks good. I do think that is she is literally just wearing a white leotard over it though, which is like I'm, which is a little bit kind of like you could have a little more design, but but overall she does look good. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Let's move on to Lux. So I think Lux is doing a play on because her her purse is a balloon uh, dog. So is she supposed to be like a balloon uh, creature? Is she? I mean, she looks good. She's she great. Is she a balloon creature? I don't know. She she, she said something. I can't remember what she said. Um, yeah, I don't remember either. But but she does look good though. I, I, I like this outfit and and she looks she looks really good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Lux has been doing some really great runways and she is um continued to come through. 
Um, let's go into Spice. Spice. I like that this is a different silhouette for Spice. I agree. And she looks really good. This is a she great look for her. She yeah. looks I, I have no I have besides though I do hate that fucking walk. I it's it is it is annoying. <laughs> and and part maybe I'm just a, oh, boring because like Marsha also did some some walk that I hate. I can't remember what she did. I just remember I just remember writing down, I wish Marsha would have just walked. Oh, she was freezing. She was acting like she was cold the whole time. Part of me is like, can y'all just run away? Can we just have can we just run away? But but you know, to each their own. Yeah, I think I I I like Spice's look. I love the hair. I love the um the the fur, the white the colors look good. I think Spice looks good. I'm like, yes, give us variety, bitch. Like the uh, and this is a little bit of Malaysia, not this week, but like when when girls are packing all your future bitches for season 16 and whoever many seasons, when you're going for the show and you're doing your runways, like I mean, just give yourself variety. Like just like j- just don't pack so many of the same silhouette. The fact that Malaysia packed five gowns for runways to me that is crazy. That is crazy. Bianca would and like to have a word with you. I I mean she did win, but also we can all agree. Bianca is an exceptional drag queen. Bianca is insanely funny, and she's good at all these things. You know what I mean? So whatever. Um, or a Maori. Um, I really like the coat. I, I don't I don't love the pants and. Well, it's a Balenciaga moment. She's trying, it's like it's, it's a nod to Balenciaga for oh, sure. Oh, is it? Yeah, Balenciaga. This is a very Balenciaga silhouette. What's the Balenciaga? In the, in the pants. Um, it's like the it's like the shoe into the stocking into the legging situation. Oh, I don't love it. Yeah. I love the I love the kimono though. The kimono, the puff, the puff kimono is really cute. I disagree. I like the whole look. I think I I think it looks very chic. I like the hair with the two. I think this whole thing is very cute and it's a very in a, a cool way that I would not think to do puffs and to have I them in your was a skirt sleeves. a little bit. A skirt? Yeah, kind of been cute, but I, I, I happen to like this. I think it looks good. Um, let's go on to Sasha. Sasha Bitch. Colby. This is so she good. She looks so fucking hot. I would fuck this queen. She looks so hot. Yeah, this outfit is amazing. Sasha is, is Sasha has pretty consistently, uh, especially for the past three weeks, done some really amazing looks on the runway, and yeah. she is just she's a this this bitch is a fucking great drag queen. Like she is a fucking drag queen. Yeah, this looks very good. Like how it, it's not just a regular little bodysuit. How like the different pa- this looks the asymmetry of it. I Sasha looks so 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 good, and the and hair. What I mean when I say like you know. Um, Lucy just put on like a white leotard, and <laughs> Sasha seemed to have thought really thought about the elements of like not just putting on just like a, a half yellow, half black leotard. She really, it's there's so there's so many design elements going on. Yeah, not just the coat, you know. I agree. Even even how she look at the skirt. It's like it's like the, the the snappy part of like a skirt. She chopped it off, and she like made it asymmetrical. I think she is just so good, so well done. I agree. Um, um, I, I wish I wish instead of that honey blonde at six twenty seven in the ball, I wish the ball was black. But I guess you want to give more dimension because if the ball was, bl- yeah, I think it should have been black. But she's probably trying to give more dimension and more extra. I, think, I don't I, think she needs it. It complements the coat, in my opinion. The hair, the 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 the, the honey blonde. Yeah, I like the black and the lighter color complements the black and the yellow in the coat. I think. No, yeah, that part, but the actual ball is six twenty seven. I see the yellow streaks, but the actual hair is like six twenty seven. I think it could, could have just been black. You would have still see those yellow stripes. Yeah, anyway, yeah, I like it. I, I think it's good. It's a little nitpicking, not anything important. Um, so let's go to Jack. Okay, I was torn because I really, I actually like this outfit. I do not like this hair. This the hair, hair is, is always Bob. The hair is always a miss every time. And it's not that the hair is bad. It just doesn't make sense with this look. Doesn't make sense. I don't understand. Even if honestly, even if this bitch has got a black kitty cat, it would have made more sense. A black kitty cat would have been really cute with this. You know, like yeah. just why this hair? She's always fucking up with the hair every time. The hair is always this, her hair has not made sense with any look she's worn on the entire season. The comment, the, the comment section is crazy. They cannot believe Monet would recommend a kitty cat. They're like, not Monet and the kitty cat. <laughs> but no, a kitty cat would a kitty cat would have made really good. But this look is really cute. I it do. Is. It's, I mean, it's not necessarily her fault, but like when you are a shorter person, you do have to be a little bit more conscious of your silhouettes. And mm-hmm. she is a tiny, a tiny queen. Um, yeah. But this, I, I would wear this outfit. I love this outfit. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Let's go on to Miss Malaysia. Bitch, when this fucking bitch turned the corner, I said, Malaysia, 
the baby doll fox the baby doll is coming to play drag this is such a cute this looks so cute thank you for finally putting some respect on the on the fox's name on the fox's name no malaysia looks amazing malaysia this is such a good look malaysia has hit her stride like something happened like two episodes ago i think it was when when marcia cut her off something that lit a fire <laughs> but in malaysia has been she is she because she, she she even turned it up in the challenge like she was fading in snatch game and, mm-hmm. and we're gonna get to it she was so good in this challenge yeah yeah like, i think malaysia did a really good job and, and lining is the- great this is so Lining it good. in that yellow to make everything else pop was great. I want my one little, if I had to nitpick, kind of like with Sasha, we've seen this hair a couple times. I wish you would have think, thought about some different hair with it. I like this hair with it, but it's something we've seen like her like four, five, four times now. But I think this look is, even the little juice box purse, she really nailed this. She looks yeah. really good. Stunning. Let's go into uh, Men in Black. My she looks girl. Amazing. So I good. love this queen. I love this queen. I love her. I love this bitch so much. This is a very good look. She looks. <sighs> I, I, I can't think of anything about this look that I dislike. Everything about this look is good. Are there so pockets? Good. No, there's no pockets. No. Um, no pocket. No, but this is this is a very good look. This is such even the a- small details. Those black accents in the waistband on the thing. It's saying mistress on it. It's like those small details, right? Like I and you know I know Bob hates straight flat hair, but she's wearing straight flat hair with this. And but it's still it's teased, so it's volume in the straight flat I hair, right? Hate, uh, I do not hate hate uh, hair down like her. This is not this is not unstyled human hair. Now, if you go back and look at Spice, I think Spice has unstyled human hair in her look, which I don't even hate it here because she has a hat on. But also, Mistress has on a hat, and her, this this hair is also uh, isn't it multicolor? Uh, I don't I, I don't remember that. I just thought it was blonde. But but I I don't think this is just unstyled human hair wigs. I think that this looks really good. Um, so I don't want to do not spread rooms that I hate. No, I did not say you. I said you, you said, had you straight said, I flat know hair. Bob hates flat straight hair, which is which, that's verbatim. You, what you said, said on this podcast many times. I said unstyled human hair wigs. How do you know this is un, how do you know this is this is, how do you know this is not this is not unstyled? Because you can tell there's a tease in it. Even you said there's a tease in it. Yeah, eat your words. Gobble gobble, bitch. <laughs> num num. Was that good? You want you want some of the some of the hot sauce I spilled on the floor earlier? <laughs> uh, but let's go on to Mistress. I mean to Anitra. Okay, can I, I Anitra say it real quick? What? Baby, where has Anitra been? That was a moment where I was like, oh my God, Anitra, where is she? She is so quiet. Are they I Anitra is out? Women. Is she just really quiet? I think Anitra may be a really quiet girl. And I think because she had such a big splash in the first episode, we were all like, oh shit, Anitra is one to watch. I think Anitra may be a naturally quiet person. And maybe she doesn't excel in challenges outside of something like what she did for her. Because these, these the, the talent show, you're doing something in my, and for what I think, you're doing something that is your thing, something that is in your bag, something you can do in your sleep to impress people. And maybe acting is not her thing and other things. And we have to wait to see a challenge she excels at again. Yeah, she's been in the background. Um- I also think it's part of the, like, this episode, Sasha Colby also had no talking heads. But she was still prominent, though. Yeah, but yeah, but Sasha had that moment where she, where she was uh, in the middle of the, of the argument. And she was trying to mediate between um, Malaysia Baby Doll and, um, and Lux and, 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 um, and Mistress. But anyway, she, she looks pretty good. Like, this look is, is not crazy, but she looks, again, I, I know I said this, but if I, if, I, if I saw her in the club, I'd go, hey, girl. And I probably wouldn't think much past that. Yeah, I think it's fine. This is to me, this is a soft two. It's fine. It kind of looks like a coat you'd like buy in the real world. Oh, girl, I think that's what it is. I mean, she said it was it was lined with this and then the other, but it looks like bitch. I can get this coat at Pretty Girl. Rainbow would like to have a word with Anitra about this coat. Yeah, um, she yeah. does look good in red though. She does look good in that yeah. color palette. Let's well, move yeah, on. Oh, to- that, that that pink and red is sexy. Yeah, especially for Valentine's Day. Selena is titties. Little thing she with her makeup, that little, that little, that little scar. I want to start doing that. See now, you know Shay does that, and I mean, I didn't know Anitra. Maybe Anitra does a lot, but I know Shay for having the like bloop bloops. But you know, who knows? Bloop bloops. Um, bloop. I love Selena's look. I think it's love so cool. Selena's look. I love it. It's such a smart idea. How she brought it in the middle and having all those little tchotchkes and all like the puffer thing. I think this is so well done. Selena looks. Great. Love, 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 love this look on Selena. This is my favorite look Selena's done on the runway, actually. 
I would agree. And I love I that agree. each, I love that you can see the polyfill in each pocket. And I love that she has a thing in each one. It's really a cool idea. And the one that says uh, her lipstick, uh, Selena, based on her pocket, I, I think it was very well done. Very good job, not, Selena. I didn't like the, 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 I don't like when people put stuff on their crotch as a joke. I don't know why. It's just not funny to me. <laughs> I don't, I just don't think that's funny. I have Cheetos on my pussy. Okay. Like, like uh, I remember I, I kind of got into it with Derek on my season because Derek put a reef on her pussy. And I was like, and I was like, that's not funny. <laughs> I want to play devil's advocate. I, I think there is a way that that could be funny. I don't think Selena su- succeeded, but I, Bob loves to be like, I don't think that's ever funny. When I know if someone did it in a really funny way, Bob would find it funny. Like, again, I think there's something you could do, Bob. You know that I, would find it I know funny. me better than you know me, bitch. You that's love not true. What, 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 Bob, what Bob would do. I, I know Bob would think this more than Bob does. <laughs> Nigga, know yourself. Start with that. <laughs> to thine own self be true. Um, let's go on to Marsha. <sighs> it's fine. It's not fine. <laughs> it's not fine. First of all, this literally looks like a diaper. This is a diaper. She's wearing a diaper. And the, and the legs are like, I don't know if the legs are, are actually filled themselves. They're like uneven and... And I also wish I wish she had just walked the runway instead of doing this whole like cold character thing. I I do not like this look, and I don't think it's fine. <laughs> yeah, it's not my favorite. I mean, and she keeps on doing this red thing, like for either her nose is bruised or she has sunburns. So I'm like, bitch, put it on your face. Put like do your makeup. So I spending time making your body burn, bitch. Bur- burn your face. Do like do that. Um. So yeah, I but I do. I want to really, you know, give her a hand, a, a clap for trying a little harder. That's that's admirable. Um, <laughs> should we get into the the actual uh, episode? The, I mean, the, the 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 filming or the the what do you call it? The challenge? Yeah. What were those weird? I I know they were trying to evoke some type of era of TV, but I I didn't find sitcom. it to be 90, funny. Ninety sitcom. But but ninety sitcom had the laughter applause to make you like or this like had, it would be like had laughter too. Wah. Oh, I didn't hear it on my. Maybe I wasn't listening to it. I mean, I watched the episode. I I didn't like it. I did not like. It. I didn't think it 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 landed how they were, int- were intending it to. You know, I think and I said this before. I think that Drag Race might be getting a little too self referential at this point. Like it is, it is to the point where if you have not watched Drag Race for seasons, you will be like, "What the fuck are they talking about?" Yeah. Uh, like Aura was like, what? Aura was like, what is any yeah. old ago? Like, like if if you have not been watching Drag Race for seasons, I think the oldest yeah. joke they went back to was back was was back to season I think ten. They they might have had some even before that. Um, they might have even had they may have had, they, you know they even had some um there was there were some old old references in here. So I think Drag Race might be a little too self referential these days in these challenges. And I wish they would just kind of just write things that are just funny just because they're funny even if you have, even if you don't watch Drag Race, you know. I want to go back a little bit. When in the runways, when when Mistress came out and she said a puffer coat on a big girl would be an absolute disaster, I fucking lost my shit because I was like, that is hilarious. She's like, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do this. Anyway, I wanted to give my girl a little. Um, yeah, I agree. I think they are getting a little too self self referential, and I think there is stake in referencing things outside of Drag Race, right? Like, there's a lot of pop culture going on, things that we all, as as, as a world view, and we comment on. Like, I, I agree. I think they can work in some some more of that stuff. So, my aunt that watches every twelve seasons can watch a show and still find things funny and like carry on with the show. I agree. I, mean, I agree. Fair, in their defense, when you're there, you you, you can't really make a current reference because. Whatever's current then is literally by the time I watch it, it's 10 months old. And there was also a this point true. in Drag Race But they UK, used to do it before. They were, there was a point in Drag Race UK where they were making jokes about the queen, and the queen had passed away after they had filmed it. Um, but there are certain things, right? Like if in season nine, we had a Kardashian the musical. And there are certain things, yeah. yes, they may not be as popular, but you could, they, they are mainstays in pop culture that you can reference periodically to at least, you know, cut it up a little bit. Well, yeah, Drag Race does that with like Britney the musical and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. No, no, Britney was in the Kardashian musical. Was she? Hey, Kardashian. Britney Spears? Britney, which one was Britney in? Uh, Pep Perry played Britney. Pep played Britney? Yeah. Do you watch the show, Tamar? No, this was you talking. You think you think in Alaska when no, they all did Pepper, the Britney Spears. Pepper played Britney Spears. I don't remember this. During the musical. Jacob, what was the musical for season nine? 
It was, it was, it was Kardashians or Ruzico. It was the Kardashians. It should have been yeah, Black China. Pep, and Pep played Britney. Why would Pep play Britney and Kardashian to Rusical? Because I think I think that Kim Kardashian used to organize Britney's closet or something. Paris Hilton. Well, Paris was in it too. Uh, I'm looking. Give me one know. second. For some reason, I, I, Brit, uh, Brit, Peppermint was Britney. Peppermint was Britney Spears. Yeah. Oh. Oh, no, no, Bob. That's All Stars Eight. Oh my no, God. Peppermint was Britney Spears on Nine. I'm telling you. We're, we can't talk about this. We need, to, we need to move on. <laughs> Not Jacob said Jacob said Jacob 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 his Marshall bag today. Well, <laughs> after 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 re, after the reunion, we we can't talk about All Stars. What eight. reunion? Jacob, there's no reunion. The girls of seasons All Star Seven were just gonna hang out. There was no reunion. Oh yes, after. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so I, I, um, I, um, I wish that Malaysia, when she spoke in tongues, she would have used some lyrics from "Call Me Mother." Oh, that would have been a good one. I wish you would be like, na 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 no, I, bet you, I we used to say that back in when we used to go to when when we when none of us spoke tongues yet because we thought this the, we thought that the spirit didn't get us yet. We would like say things like arrive in a Honda, leave it a Lexus. So. You know, Tyler Perry was writing movies, I mean musicals and plays way before you were uh, skip skip. Beat. Yeah, but they how weren't popular the, how, like that. And yes, they were. Okay. Okay. Hold on, hold on. Speak yes, yes, he was. Speak for yourself. Yes. You're you're in New York and in, in Georgia they were. Massive. Well, they weren't popular for us. This is they, 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 they were not bit we they were not popular for us. I'm not saying he would, he didn't start writing I, yet, I but they were a dollar, not popular. A little bit of Tyler Perry could sneak up to which it wasn't the eighteen hundreds. I bet a little <laughs> bit of Tyler Perry could have made its way up to New York City even. I bet maybe, a dollar. but I was saying, but they were not pop culture for us in the church in New York City at my oh, church. Why you discredit like the hardest like the, the hardest working Because of his massage noir against black women, honey. That's why. Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure that's the reason why. I mean, I, I actually, I'm like, like, like I love Tyler. I don't, I have no, I have practically no. Wow, Tyler Perry. you heard it here first. Bob worships the, at the church of Tyler Perry. You know I me. Mean? If there's one thing I love, it is religious based uh, Christian movies. Well, Bob, I don't know. Since 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 you work with Madonna, you've changed. You've changed. And you know what? And, and our Lord and Savior like to have a word with you. <laughs> Honey. Um, and the stars of the challenge, I would say the stars of Malaysia, Mistress. And I also really, really, really enjoyed Lucy Laduca's part. Well, whose name? Whose name did you say first? Who was the first one you said? I said Malaysia, yeah. Mistress, and Lucy. Yeah, exactly. But I, I do think Mistress was the best overall. But I did enjoy Malaysia's as well. Um, I'm, I'm just being silly. Um, no, um, Mistress did a good job. Malaysia did a great job. I also thought that um, I genuinely thought that Marsha had a great moment with um, who's Marsha teamed up with for a second there? Uh, 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 uh Selena. Yeah, Selena and Marsha had a great moment. Selena, I mean, Marsha was like, like acting. Like I was like, this, like Marsha could really be on. Marsha was really good in this. Show. I, I genuinely thought that Marsha did a really good job. I was very impressed with how much mileage she got out of that little, um, that little part. Um, Anitra was really quiet, stayed quiet the whole time, and that Danny Trejo bit coming in at the end was really funny. Did you okay? I didn't think it was that funny. Like I like Danny Trejo. He's, he's my favorite character from Spike Kids. Um, but I thought it was. I was like, okay, okay. I thought it was funny. I think just the cultural reference of Danny Trejo walking through the door saying a bunch of Drag Race quotes over and over again to me is a, is a very funny concept. Oh, I did not think so. I was like, okay, sure. Wow, you're you're banned from Trejo Donuts. Banned. I will say this: to fucking Lux's fucking Southern accent was despicable. It was, she was just doing, Lux was just doing Lux. She's like, oh my God, yeah, because the girls like need to go down. Uh, I was like, Lux, not even trying. I don't even, (laughs) it didn't even register me that she was doing a Southern accent. It it, it literally never even registered me that she was ever doing a Southern accent. So, yeah, the way Lux talks is so Northeast. It's so Northeast. It's like, okay, so when, they, when Naomi's on this podcast, I realized there's so much about Lux that really reminds me of Naomi Smalls. Uh, is it, or, is it, or is it L.A.? Well, I think I talk, I, when, I, when I said that she was dark-skinned Naomi, y'all act like I was crazy. But now you're saying it. Now you're saying it. 
Well, because Naomi brought up points when she was here, and like Lux, something that Lux has said that like Naomi Small is like one of her favorite is is her favorite drag race queen. Like, so well, listen, obviously, Naomi has a lot of fucking sons in this world, honey. She's birthed, she's birthed a lot of these kids. Down. Honey. Let me there, there are, let me tell you the the queens who oh, I really think literally birthed a lot of queens. You're frozen. Am I frozen for you, Jacob? Ooh, you're back. You're back. I, oh. Oh. Queens who I think have really birthed a lot of queens. Um, Raven has birthed a lot of queens. Trixie and Mattel Naomi. has birthed a lot of queens. Naomi, Naomi Smalls has birthed a lot of fucking queens. Who else? Um, those are the only three, the, the main three I can think of right now. Um, oh, Kennedy Davenport. But also, I, I, don't, I don't know if Kennedy RuPaul. Davenport. I mean, obviously, RuPaul, yeah, sure, 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 sure. sure. But um, Not I don't Kennedy know, Davenport. No, I think there's like that, the, a lot of the way that she's performing that, the way that um, Chi Chi Devane used to worship at the altar of Kennedy Davenport, so does Mistress Isabel Brooks, especially in the way they perform. A lot of the way they're performing is very reminiscent of the way that uh, Kennedy Davenport, they, a lot of them are literally doing Kennedy Davenport's exact exact dance moves well i will say i didn't but a lot of that i don't know how much i was chucking up to kennedy i'm not trying to invalidate kennedy but i thought a lot of that was just like how a lot of southern dancing queens perform you know what i mean especially going around that's how they, a lot of them dance i thought that was just like a southern dancing well, thing she said that she got a lot of chi chi said specifically a lot of her the way that she learned to dance was from watching kennedy davenport videos specifically from watching kennedy davenport videos work yeah. Um and uh, that being said, the winner of this week's challenge is finally because she's been robbed a couple times. She should have about two wins under her belt, maybe three. But Mistress finally wins a challenge. Yeah, Mistress it might be, it might be um, and, and I, I think she deserved to win the challenge. She did a really really Agreed. good job, and her runway um, was fabulous. If I would have given it, a, if if I if I was giving out a uh, high say whatever whatever the kids are doing, I would say second place for me would probably go to um, Malaysia. I would say that too. Her runway was fabulous, and she did a great job. Yeah, the they, worked, they worked. They worked really well together. They did. They did. They did. Honestly, I can. I, I admire putting your bullshit aside and just getting the job done. Yeah, for sure. I, mean, I do it weekly, twice a week on this in my life. Well, anyway, um, I, so I, I, had that, I had that moment with um with Derek Barry, where Derek Barry had to, had to put our differences aside to to come together and work as a team. Did you did you have any like rivalries during like during your season like like No, Bob. Everyone likes I get along with everyone. No one has a That's I'm not, not a bad boat with That's anyone. not true. Do we need to run back our, all the scandals we have of of the queens? And who was the Honey. who was the at the epicenter of all of them? What's who your was point? the reason? What is your point in any of this? What's your part in any of this? <laughs> no. No. I don't have to have a part in it. My part is you instigating all hmm. my fights. What's what's your part in any of this? Bob is like y'all ever see those viral videos of like people fighting and like the big sister is the one is the one doing all the talking and then the little sister has to fight. That's literally me. I'm the little sister. Like no, no, I don't want to. Bob's like yeah, yeah, and he go whoop your ass. I'm like no, no, I don't want to fight. Yeah, you see me, see my little sister. She go take take off your book bag, take off your book bag, tie your hair up. You fighting right now? That's me. What is your part in? It's all me. You you have no you have no say in this. You just yes, correct. Someone needs to learn about taking responsibility for their <laughs> actions. Um, <laughs> but so the the bottom three are Spice, Jax, and um, Miss uh, Aura Mayori. Yeah, I would have definitely three? put. I would have put Aura. I, I it could have been I, any. Those all three of them were terrible. But runways, I think Spice's runway was better. Uh, Spice and Aura had some, to me the same level. Definitely Jax for sure. But Spice or either of them could have been in the bottom. I'd have been like, sure. The only thing I didn't like about Spice, Jax's runway was her hair. The rest of it I liked. I just didn't like the hair. Um, and and I and I wish that Aura had a skirt on instead of the pants. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but Spice, I do think Spice's runway was just a solid look. I mean, there, it, a part of it is it, it is a it is a little it's a little bit pedestrian. And and and, I, and when I say pedestrian, I don't mean like if if I saw a person on the street wearing this, I'd be like, "Wow, you are really wearing a very intricate outfit." But for drag, it is a scotch pedestrian for drag. When when you put her next to, if you put uh, spice between Malaysia and Mistress, <laughs> you'd be like, "Where's the drag?" <laughs> um, uh, look look on the screen. Imagine putting spice directly between <laughs> Malaysia and Mistress, and you'd be like, "This is a little bit pedestrian." Yeah, I would agree with that. But I also, everyone, y'all know me. I like a production look. I wear production stuff very often. But you don't do but it on the runway. You don't, you don't do it true. on the runway every RuPaul's Drag Race. There's, there's, there's a time true. and a place. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. You'll be coming to someone's mama. There's a time and a place for everything. Oh, my God. 
Anyway, so Spice is safe, and the bottom two are Jax and Ormaiori. And I always Jax say, is- hold my, reserve my judgment before until I hear the song. What was the song again, Jacob? Oof, I definitely don't know. No, it was. Um, oh, it was. Oh no, I do remember. It was a uh, sweetest pie by Megan yeah, Thee Stallion. Sweetest pie. And soon I heard. Soon I heard. Uh, soon I heard Dula Peeps. I said. Everyone say goodbye to Aura Mayora. Everyone, everyone say goodnight. <laughs> everyone, yeah, say your goodbye because Jax was eating down. Jax went, yeah. Uh, Jax really ate. She went, she really did go bananas on this. I think, yeah, I agree. Too, that, I think that, that um the the Aura also I, it makes sense to why she took off her um her kimono because it was so massive and she said it was like forty pounds. But also, like, wait a little, like, at, at the top of the number, like, y'all, come on, like, save something, build to something. And also, the moment she took it off, she was just, like, it was, she was in the most underwhelming outfit you could be in. <laughs> like, the moment she took off the puffer quote, she was just in a pair of Not leggings. the puffer quote. The puffer quote? Puffer quote. The puffer quote. <laughs> I saw we. Um, yeah, and Jax was Molly Walter. Jax was doing. Jax has some very. Jax is obviously very acrobatic. We've seen from week one, and Jax has a very. She moves very swiftly. I I do wonder, like, if she has to lip sync again. What, have we seen everything? Is it going to be time? The next time we see a lip sync, are we going to be like, girl? Well, you never know. You know, people people think that Brooklyn Heights is every time they see going to be kicks and splits. But if you go see Brooklyn Heights on tour, she doesn't like. She does a ballad down. Same with Kenny Davenport. Kenny Davenport does a ballad. Down. Have you seen um, Kenny Davenport do um the 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 um the Gladys Knight eleven minute number? Yeah, I have. It's really good. So I'm on, good. on the internet, I've never seen it in person, but I've seen it on the internet though. Yeah. Yeah. So, so just because a girl bucks doesn't mean she can't you know park and bark. This is true. This is true. Um. Um. And but Jack sends Aura Mayari home, and Aura Mayari, she put out. Did you see merch she put out? I will say this: there are very very few queens I know who who do great park and barks who are young. Like, I don't know a whole lot of queens who do a fierce park and bark who are, like, in their 20s. Like, we just named, like, Brooklyn Besides Heights. Monet. How old do you think you are? I, I want you to tell me. You, 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 think, you think Brooklyn Heights is in her 20s? No, no, I said I don't know a lot of queens who are in their 20s who do, who do a great park and bark. And then you said Brooklyn Heights. No, Monet, I'm saying, I'm naming queens who aren't in their 20s. All the queens I named who do great park and barks, none of them are in their 20s. Well, I'm in my 30s. Do you want to give me some flowers? It's still listening comprehension for me, Monet. Do you want to give me some flowers? No, because you're not in your 20s. You don't you don't fall into the category, Monet. It's not about you. It, this has nothing to do with you. Everything's so not about you. Do you think you. Naomi Smalls can do a good park and bark? I've never seen Naomi do a park and bark, and I don't I think... have. She did um um uh, I'll never love this way. Um uh, uh, um that Arizona sky from 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 um spit it out. Shout. From what? I said I just said spit it out. <laughs> Jacob, what's that movie with with Lit, Jabob, Lady Gaga, and Bradley Cooper? Oh my God! Oh, uh, a Star is Born. Born. She does a great battle with that. Oh. It's really beautiful. Bob, have you seen Monet do any park and ride numbers before she turned thirty? Yeah, yeah, I saw them. Yeah, I saw them. <laughs> should we should we keep moving? Should we move it on? Should we, should we keep should we keep going? You are such a bitch. You are <laughs> such a bitch. You have any other questions? <laughs> you are such a bitch. <laughs> Uh, Monet, Monet does a great. Um, well, you're not parking in the opera. You bark, but you don't park. You you move, you move <laughs> around a little bit. And you do a reveal. I do the little reveal. Do a little reveal. Um, um, I saw, uh, someone posted your thing on Reddit, and everyone said, "Do you think this is going to be a reveal?" <laughs> it's Monet in this like massive coat. Everyone said, "Do you guys think she's going to reveal?" <laughs> <laughs> you know one of my favorite TikToks what I did of you, Shannon Eureka, at the season two rear premiere. <laughs> you have on our our pink <laughs> Dream Girls outfit. Eureka. <laughs> <laughs> I look good though. You look great. You look beautiful. Well, I didn't I, I didn't feel like changing up too much, so I just put something on top. But honestly, I look good. I I need to wear that more often. I look good. No, you you <laughs> bitch, that's ours. You wear it when I, we say okay, you, you can wear it. Yours, you wear yours and I wear mine when I wear mine. Let's no, you cannot. If I come out somewhere, what you gonna do? I see if you I know what you, you wear you, that money, I was somewhere and you saw me wearing it. You know what you did? You took a picture, you posted it on the internet, you shut the hell up. I you approved sit down it because I was sh- there. And I shut I my fat it. ass up. You, just, you sit I, down and I shut my fat ass up. You were there when I wore it. You didn't do nothing. <laughs> and that's and that's what you're gonna do next time too. <laughs> so oh yeah, I did see Aura's 
Or is, is, did she release um, Aquarium merch? Uh, Aquarium merch? What do you mean? Or released a shirt that said any hole is a goal. I, I thought that any hole is a hole because that was the line she kept on. Yeah, yeah any hole is a hole. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Atlanta Public School. Um, <laughs> if you all want to see Ora Mayori's butt, Ora Mayori posted... Um, uh, let me let me see it, huh? Or am I? Why does she not pop up? Oh, am I blocked? Shut up! No, I don't think. Oh, she pops up for me. I'm not blocked. There's no way I'm blocked. <laughs> no, she's here. Um. Oh, is it any hole as a hole? Oh, okay, that's funny. Yeah, and it's a, it's a cute merch. I'll, I'll but if y'all want to see Aura's, if y'all want to see Aura's butt, she posted the whole thing, not the whole you know thing, what? not the whole I, thing, the, the whole thing. I said, I said this from the beginning. Aura should have all the cringe queen stuff and a kiss my muscles. Aura should have really leaned into that. I think Aura should have sold a cringe queen T shirt. Aura should have, should 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 sell eight by tens of her out of drag, kissing her muscles. Bitch, we will, that's the stuff we want. Baby, lean into Dragon uh LA is coming up. Lean into it, Aura. If you hear this, Aura Mayari, you need to make cringe queen uh merch and you need an eight by ten in black and white note shirt of you kissing your fucking muscle and sell that shit at Dragon. I, I'll just, buy one. When I just tell her to make an OnlyFans at this point, Jesus Christ! <laughs> I'm just telling her. Like, you, need bitch, get, you need a video of you getting your back blasted <laughs> out. Hear me out. Listen, you're on a bed, holding your legs, ankles by your ears, getting fucking <laughs> de- 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 like that's what we want. Or give us. I mean, give us a pin of just your your bicep with like a kiss a kiss on it. Like that's what we want. I always tell Monet because Monet be trying to. I think Monet's taking some advice for herself here because because Monet does the thing where she Monet wants to sometimes distance herself from certain things, and I'm always like Monet, oh do God. the hits. I'm like Monet, oh just God. do the fucking hits. Like when, when we did our, our tour, I was like Monet, we're just gonna come out of purse first and soak it up. Just do. Don't try to. Because because there was something when when I was saying she didn't want to do sponges anymore. It was something recent when I was like, I don't want to do sponge. I don't do a sponge. It wasn't thing. for the, it wasn't for our tour. It was something else. It was it was something I don't remember what it was. But when I was like, I don't want to do a sponge thing. And I was like, when they just do the hits, you, you can always do more stuff down the line. I was like, bitch. <laughs> I, I remember when I when I when I um I saw um uh I didn't see her there, but that's what's that? What is that cabaret space right next to Ellen Stardust Diner? It's called like the the Iridium. I think it's called the Iridium. It's, it's here in New York City, and um. Someone went to go see Jennifer um, Holiday there. And they're like, girl, 40 years later, she is still singing, and I'm telling you. And that's because when you go, if you went to go see a Jennifer fucking Holiday concert, how would you feel if she did not do, and I'm telling you? She did the whole show, and she said, thank you, good night, and you didn't hear, and I'm telling you. I would be like, I want it here, and I'm telling you. <laughs> Come back for the, the not Christmas show. It wasn't did Christmas you do Purse First, your tribute show? Yeah. Thank you, Jacob. Did you do Purse First? So if I went to the Bob the Dragon Troubadour show and I bought my motherfucking ticket thinking I would see Purse when I didn't see it, I want a refund. How about that? But I did. I love when Jacob Jacob will come in and gather your black ass. Thank you, Jacob. I'm about to I'm about to Malaysia baby doll fox all of you. You you and Lux. (laughs) Mistress Men in Black and London London Lux Noir. (laughs) <laughs> Jacob, J- I, Jacob is Jacob will Jacob will read the dolls. <laughs> I just I believe you got to do the hits, 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 Miss Mamas, do the hits. Also, thanks to everyone who came to the Troubadour show. We were turned up. Um, and if you want to go, oh, also over my YouTube page, I'm, I'm releasing a video. Me and um, Ocean Kelly did a, t- a countdown of um, our favorite ten verses in the history of Drag Race. Top ten verses and, in the history of Drag and, Race. And Ocean, Ocean Kelly produced most of the album with another person. Produced. So Ocean Kelly did. Ocean Kelly is great. Yeah, Ocean Kelly is phenomenal. Ocean Kelly, when I'm doing now, Ocean Kelly, when it comes to this list, Ocean Kelly knows what the fuck he's talking about. Um, Monet, what what was next week's challenge? I can't remember. What was next week's challenge? I don't remember. The Lala Perusa. Oh, oh I hate see. Lala. I mean, it's fine. I want. Who's going home? Who's going home? I think it's going to be everything nice. Spice, oh yeah, Spice can't lip sync against any of these girls. Spice is going home down. Imagine if the first one is like Spice versus Anitra. Anitra's over here, fucking, d- fucking dipping, jumping, splitting, and Spice, and spice, spice is like, going home. Going home. That shit. It's <laughs> is she. Maybe she's a little cringy. She's a little cringy too. <laughs> uh, RuPaul, 
Gay. <laughs> yeah, Spice is absolutely going home for sure. Watch she wins. Watch she wins, and we're both looking crazy as hell. Bitch, they could put the power the Powerpuff Girl theme song, and this bitch ain't winning. Sugar, Spice, and everything nice. This bitch is still not winning. That's not the Powerpuff Girl theme song. Yes, it is. Dun, dun, da, 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 da. No happen to fighting crime, trying to save the, save world. the world. Here they come, they just, in just in time. time. Oh, the power puff girls. Then it goes, Bubbles. She is the joy and the laughter. A bottle cup. She is the strongest fighter. Something. Power puff said that. But I do remember they're going in the in the city of Townsville. Yeah. But then it goes into the song. I I, I think that, I think no I think the power of that song we were singing is the closing credits actually. Yeah, it starts with. The professor making sugar, spice, and X, everything nice. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they had a different song beginning. Anyway, um, well, I love you so much. And um, I'm happy you got in a good mood. I was nervous about today. Y'all, shut Fulte, the fuck up. Shut the Fulte, fuck up. we started this podcast, shut and I was like, up. oh, how about that? Lord. And me how, and Jake were sitting here. start with you shutting the fuck up? We were sitting here. Bob was like, I can't get this to work. I was like, oh, God, here okay, we go. All, but I you pulled it together. I told you guys I was sleepy. And just because I, just because I, um, have a level of professionalism, uh, uh, so when the camera turns on, I'm not a a a a curmudgeon like you were. But if y'all want to see Monet when she can't get her attitude together, go back and watch the Bob Ross challenge, and you'll see what it's like to work with someone <laughs> oh who can't who can't flip the switch and make it work for camera. So yeah, I was because, a little sleepy because I, I give I give I give my followers the realness. I don't give them this big the realness. Dun 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 dun. The and I realness. give them the professionalism. So yes, I was I was yes Monet, I was sleepy it took me a second to wake up i was not i was not in a bad mood i was just i wasn't grumpy i wasn't snapping i was just sleepy and moving slowly do you mind that's okay with you right you don't mind do you and do you want to um all the fans saying that monet would have literally a landslide that i will body you on a dick sucking contest body you that's you literally would you literally Monet. Read the comments, baby. Okay, on first, YouTube. First of all, and, I don't and, care what the comments are saying. I don't <laughs> care what the comments are saying. Monet, first of all, your toothy ass dick fix itself. Fucking, because I'm, fi- I'm at the end dick, of my dick, Invisalign. Your it fixes itself. Scrapers, that's what we call you. Them, 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 them we call dick scrapers. Okay? <laughs> Monet, first of all, let me tell you right now. There is a way we could literally, we could, we could resolve all this. I'm going to put that right there. We could resolve all of this. Honey. So you sucking Andy's dick? No, and you're not sucking dick of dick. We don't. We don't find a third party. We we can have we can have this resolved very easily. If you are a patron out there and you are attracted to both me and Monet, and you if you're one of our listeners and you're attracted to both, me, we will fly you out to L.A. We will put you up in a nice hotel. Flew out. Flew out. We're gonna give you three nights. The first one of us is gonna go. We're gonna give you a whole day as a palate cleanser. Actually, I'm gonna go first because once Monet scrapes all the skin off your dick, I don't want to go in second after you're all chopped and screwed, honey. Okay, Monet, let's fly someone. We're gonna fly someone out. We're gonna we're gonna officially get this whole thing done. We're gonna do a whole Patreon, a whole Patreon exclusive. I'm in a monogamous relationship. Exactly. You, the only, yeah, exactly. The, the only answer no, is you have to suck Andy's dick. You've had excuses. You've had excuses. Ever. That's not how's it monogamous if I'm, if I'm sucking Andy's dick. I'll I'll I'll, I'll let it Listen, I'll let it fly. You've had excuses ever since you were single. I have told you time time. <laughs> I've, I've been Cindy Lauper. Time <laughs> after time, I'm stepping up to the plate, honey. Okay, you 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 don't you don't want any of this. Oh my god. Okay, wait. So I'm gonna um anyway, we'll 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 fit we'll 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 we're not doing that. Yeah, because you don't want to get dusted. Exactly. And then all <laughs> and then all, and then all your little all your little monations, they're they're gonna have to they're gonna have to acknowledge, honey. And w- w- anyway. once that person gets on and says unequivocally, without a shadow of a doubt, Bob the drag queen bodied that and Monet left me literally scraped and screwed. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch, goodbye.